25th Independence Day celebration at IIT Palika. And now I call upon our Honorable Director, Mr. P.B. Sunil Kumar, to unfurl the flag. Director, sir, to honor the uh, to end this academy. Dear colleagues, students, friends, ladies and gentlemen, very good morning to all of you and a happy Independence Day. We are stepping on to the 75th year of our independence and on this happy occasion, I am very proud to be standing here and addressing all of you. I am very happy to see so many of you have come on this morning. In spite of the conditions which we have all over the world actually, including this country, to pay our respects to the freedom fighters who brought us independence and also pay tribute to all those early nation builders and also honor the nation builders of today. We all know that 75 is a special year. So there has been a lot of programs planned. There was, there has been a lot of programs planned for this year, year long celebration. We'll have to see how much of that can happen given the conditions. Nevertheless, in our mind and in our heart, it is a very special year, so we would put in special efforts towards nation building in this year. Talking about it, we wonder what is meant by nation building. We say many people talking about it. and uh, addressing people, requesting everybody to come forward and be a nation builder. Friends, nation building is not a, an exercise which is to be taken up by a few people. It has to be taken up by every citizen in this country. And when we talk about nation building, it includes every everyday activity, daily activity. I have come across in my tenure here, I have come across several people. In fact, I had the I would say I had the privilege to come across several people who have amazed me by their work. 
And we need to go and explore that. We need to go explore and see. Every one of us should explore and see what is the background from which these people come up and, and what they have done. And it will open up your eyes and you will see that how privileged are we and how little we have done. I have come across people who had nothing and decided when they had something that it has to go to other people. So that kind of activity is, and that kind of people are the true leaders of this nation and unfortunately we have very little exposure to them. I always say, you know, great people you never come to know because they are people who work in silence, who work in, away from media. So we need to go and look for them and I, I urge all people here, especially the youngsters, the students, to work and also keep your eyes open Look at other people and what they do. And as part of our activity, we should seek these people. And this year, let's make it a special pledge to seek for people like that who are working for the society without any personal gains. I will not say their personal gain is their satisfaction of doing something for the country and something for the people. And we should seek for that kind of people and bring them up, bring them here and make them talk to us and find out what motivates them. I think this, is, this should be one of the pledges we should be taking at this year. We could ask the question that what can I do as a nation builder? I would say that the people who make the laws and the people who follow the laws are both nation builders. The people who make facilities and the people who use the facilities responsibly are also nation builders. So you are given any facility, you are given a privilege, use that privilege responsibly, then you become a nation builder. You don't have to be a creator of it. If a responsible user, a responsible person who maintains things, is also a nation builder. So there is nothing, no particular activity which we have to see and seek and do to fulfill this commitment of the citizens of this country. It is doing what we are supposed to do responsibly and, and to the satisfaction of our own heart is nation building activity. And you can ask the question, what do I get? That's a standard question in today's world. What's in it for me? Nothing. Except your satisfaction. And you shouldn't be seeking anything when you do such things. You might even get adverse reactions. So I was asking, I, I was talking about what do we seek and we, we seek uh, nothing except our own satisfaction. And in fact, it would take a special uh, effort when you do such things not to seek anything. You do your duties which you are supposed to do, which you are given to do, or you find yourself to do and must be done. And you do that, do that without seeking any rewards 
Any positive comments? Anything? So that even at any adverse comments, you know in your heart that you have done the correct thing. I don't wish to speak more. I just want to stop with a few messages to the, to the youngsters here, to the new generation. And also tell my colleagues and friends here that we are a special set of people. We are in education. And education, giving education, receiving education, using your education is maybe the most fundamental of nation building. I just looked at the recent reports. Uh, recent means it's about three years old. I think it's 17, 18, 19 is the latest report on literacy in India. I'm talking about literacy, not about real education. Literacy would just mean that people can read and write, at least in one language, up to their name and a few things. It's nothing more. And what I find is that 74% of Indians, this is the statistics which the, of, the, of the people whom they have actually contacted, and you must think, you must take it with a little bit of a pinch of salt. 74% of Indians are literate, which 26% are considered to be illiterate. Now, I would think that you know most of the literate would have come into the statistics, and some of the illiterate would not have come into the statistics because you may not have reached them. So this is the kind of upper bound. And the gender gap in India between the men and women in literacy is 17%. 17% of women are less, 17% uh, of women are less in, this, in, the, in the literacy set. That amounts to, and the number comes to 186 million. in this women who are illiterate. We're talking about illiterate. And that brings us actually below the average of the poor and middle income countries. And sets us back on the UN's development goals. We have put in category, the UN Development Goal, item four, actually talks about literacy, and we, are, we score quite poorly. So you can see the responsibility there and the opportunity there. You receive the education, it is your duty, and it's your, as a citizen, it's your duty to make sure that that is passed on and, and use responsibly. I think every one of us, especially the youngsters here, uh, have the responsibility of doing that. And I must, I must say that, you know, for a, for a democracy, we, we are celebrating the 75th year of our independence, and we are a democratic country. No democratic country is truly democratic unless every citizen of that country is educated and is able to think on his or her own and make a decision and make analysis. Otherwise, it is prone to manipulation, and, and that's what we should fight on. So the basic, very basic foundation of, of the democratic country is educating people. And we all have the opportunity to do that. Not just within the walls of this institute, and we have to go out and then do it. So again, I request all the youngsters here to take the pledge that you, know, you do Spend your time and activity doing that. And again, 
please, without any, any wish of reward. Just as a, just a part of duty. A few more things to the youngsters. One is that please insist on quality. No compromise on quality. You can you insist on quality on anything which you receive, including the education you receive. There is no need to compromise, no need to have adjustment. Right? And I'm saying when I say insist on quality, the quality is not a post-mortem thing, right? You have to insist on quality. It's not a question of when I, when you say insist on quality, it's not about complaint. It's about insisting on it. That you get that done. Okay? Make sure that you get everything. Everything which you are doing, everything which you are getting done. Insist on the quality and don't compromise on that. Okay. Insist on dependability. See, the biggest problem which we have in this country is lack of dependability. I could, you think about, think about a, a organization, a country, where you can give people something to do and you can depend on them. And everybody is like that. You think about that how fast they can progress. When, when you say that you have to follow certain rules, everybody follows it. You could argue, you could dis you have a responsible dissent, you could have protest, everything against the rules, but then the rules are there, you follow them. That is to be the true nation. And that dependability, that when somebody is given a work, we can insist, we can depend on the quality, right? So that is, this to, to, to put together, we will save a lot of resources. I can see from my experience that we spend a lot of money and a lot of resources just because we don't trust the quality we get. We over-design everything. If there's one person has to do, we put two people because we can't depend on that person. I have, to, I have to construct a building, I'm over-designing it because I don't know what I'm going to get. Right? So we resources in all forms, human resources, money, material, you know, materials very, very scarce in the country, and everything we, we face because we don't have these two things. So these are the two things which we should really, really insist on, and who else except the youngsters here who would take up this thing forward. So friends, uh, uh, it was very good to, to have all of you here today and part of the celebration of the 70, 75th Independence Day. And I wish all of you a very happy day and a very happy year ahead, a safe year ahead. This is an important day of in the history of India, and and I'm sure you're all proud to be part of it, and will contribute to the coming years to the development of this country. Thank you, Jai Hind. Thank you, sir, for your words. Cleanliness is next to godliness, and we have our housekeeping crew, which which keeps our campus clean, and our di drivers who makes our commute possible. So on the behalf of IIT Palakkad, I would like to call upon Srimati Preeta, uh, housekeeping uh, representative of Neela campus, to receive the honor reading. <laughs> Mr. Raghunath. <laughs> and Sri Shaji. Online event will continue with pre recorded session. Seventy four years ago, this very day has become 
a day with destiny. An exceptional democratic nation has taken birth with geographical, linguistic, social, cultural diversity across its corners. While the colonial powers and the barbaric monarchy have been forcing us to succumb to its scrutiny and power, our ferocious fighters were primed to sacrifice everything to clinch independence to the nation, putting an end to the centuries of repercussions, slavery, loot and what not. The journey to independence was indeed a grueling one and it is the result of faith, belief, perseverance, hardships and indeed ultimate sacrifice of many people that showed unparalleled courage to get us independence. मरते मरते रहा बाकपन साथियों अब तुम्हारे हवाले वतन साथियों इन दिस नेशन ऑफ वेरी टेराइन रेस कल्चर एंड टैलेंट Sport is essentially an integral part of our lives. We see sport as a discipline rather than a hobby. We celebrate our athletes. It is often said that the work is behind the scenes and the competition is the easy part. This statement throws light on the very important aspect that often goes unnoticed amidst limelight that an athlete has hoped through the victories and triumphs beyond the success of an athlete there lies hardships and uncompromising training there is an enormous amount of pressure that is unseen pressure to reach the summit of success pressure to stand out the expectations of millions and billions of compatriots and the pressure to get better each and every day Success is a result of overcoming this tremendous amount of pressure and motivating themselves going through the strict training plans and pouring their blood, sweat and tears.
after an astounding journey of 74 years, we witnessed substantial advancements in various aspects and despite all of this, we, the proud citizens of this very nation, have the responsibility to preserve our heritage and to work towards upliftment and welfare of our nation. We must never forget our core values that our independence is a result of sacrifice of the great souls that remain eternal through the imperishable reminiscence that they have left behind. It's the result of their struggles that we are freely walking, breathing and embracing our lives today. It is a privilege to be born in this country that is so diverse from north to south and east to west. And yet we stand united and that is the magic that we have got to experience. And we must embrace and be grateful for every moment. It's our responsibility to pass on the legacy and ideology to the coming generations that a country will be identified with the people that have lived in its soil. I request Olivia, Angel and Krishnananda to perform a patriotic song. तेरी खेतों में लहरावा इतनी सी 
for your soulful performance. Now we can proceed for the unity run and there will be a tree plantation uh, near TPWD office. <laughs> 